Hello and welcome to another episode of 10 Minute Tech. My name is Will Hammond and I'm going to be your instructor today. Today I want to take a look at displacement mapping. I know some of you have probably purchased the extended version of Photoshop which gives you the ability to use 3D models. But I often meet people who would like to do a 3D type effect but they have the standard version of Photoshop. And today we're going to show you a classic technique called displacement mapping. Now displacement mapping is when you take one image and use it to warp another. And you'll notice that I'm working in RGB color mode right up here. RGB is probably the most user friendly for displacement mapping because what we're going to do with displacement mapping is create a channel that allows you to tell Photoshop push my image in this direction or that direction. And displacement mapping actually came out in um, one of the very first versions of Photoshop 20 some years ago. We're going to create a new layer of artwork and you have a couple different ways to do this. You can drag and drop a piece of artwork over or you can place a piece of artwork. I'm going to go up here to file place and I'm going to navigate out here to the desktop and uh, we're going to use this Illustrator file. Now the beauty of placing a graphic is that once it's placed it becomes a linked file. But there's another huge benefit to using placed objects. They can be edited. So being that this is Illustrator, if I change my mind I can always go back and edit the document and update automatically in Photoshop. But there is a third benefit you can now apply filters to layers that are smart object layers. Now there are a couple different ways to do that. One way is to take a standard layer, go to layer, smart object, and convert to a smart object. But you'll notice our icon right here tells us that this is in fact a smart object icon. There's another way. Suppose you have a piece of artwork that you've created from scratch in Photoshop. You can take that layer and go up to filter convert for smart filters that creates the same type of smart object in CS4 and later well what we're gonna do is create a displacement and displacement means push or move so we're gonna take a grayscale version of this image and actually use it as a map to warp our logo and graphic to make it look like it's painted or rather casting directly onto the sand dune. We're going to do that by clicking on the background layer. Now you'll notice I have disabled the top graphic layer. We're going to go to image duplicate and you'll see a little checkbox here that says duplicate merged layers only. That means any layers that are not visible will be thrown away. I'm going to call this uh, sands on the beach map and I got in the habit of doing that years ago because this displacement map will only work on this image. You could call your displacement maps anything you want. I've got my new image here. Notice that it's just the one layer and I want to convert this to grayscale. Now you could do the typical image mode grayscale and that will certainly give you a grayscale image but I want to suggest an alternative way. We're going to go into LAB color mode and we're going to go over to the lightness channel. Now lightness channel, if you've been to my workshops or you've seen my other videos, is the perceptual density of the image. In other words, it's what the image would look like were you colorblind. And I think you would agree that gives a really good looking grayscale image. I'm now going to go up here to, I've selected just the lightness channel, I'm going to go to image mode grayscale and I'm going to discard my other two channels. This is a displacement map and really all a displacement map means is um, well any area that's light on this map will push my logo or graphics up and to the left anything that's dark will push it down and to the right. Now what some people will do is they'll make this a little more contrasty for a little bit more dramatic effect you could certainly do that by going image adjustment levels and simply making the light areas a little bit lighter and adjusting the contrast a little bit. Uh, certainly not necessary but it will give you a more dramatic effect. 
More importantly, though, you're going to want to make this image look like it was soft focused. And Photoshop doesn't really have that function. So here's a quick way to create soft focus. Go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And I'm going to blur this just enough to where I cannot see the detail. I can still see the highlight and shadow, but my detail is eliminated. Your image, you're going to have to adjust it to whatever level that is. Ours just happens to be 8 pixels. I'm going to click OK. And I think you would agree this doesn't look like soft focus. This looks out of focus. Well, the very next step before you do anything else, go to the Edit menu and Fade Gaussian Blur. We're going to fade this back to about 75 or so percent. And I think you would agree that definitely creates a soft focus effect. Now, I've had people ask me, why didn't you just blur it six pixels? Well, it's not really the same effect. What this has done is taking a layer that was unblurred and duplicating it. The top layer was blurred by eight pixels, but the opacity was lowered to 75%, so you can see some of the unblurred pixels through it. And then it was flattened. That's what the fade command does. I'm going to click OK. This is going to be our displacement map. Now I'm going to go up here to File, Save As, and I'm just going to save this out to my desktop. It has to be saved in Photoshop format. So we'll save it in Photoshop format, and we can close this map. Let's go back to our original artwork. You'll notice in my original artwork, I've got my Illustrator file, and it is a smart object, which means that I can apply filters. We're going to use this filter called Displace, and you can tell by the look of it that this is an old filter. This has been around a long time. How much you displace, the number isn't really in pixels, it's an arbitrary number. The bigger the number is, the more uneven your surface is. And I know just from trial and error that I'm going to use 20 and 20. Now that means anything that's white in our map is going to be pushed 20 up and 20 over. I'm going to click OK and navigate to our map. Watch what happens when we click Open. You'll notice our pixels look like they've been kind of squished around. Well, I'm going to take this layer right here, and I'm going to change it to Overlay Blending Mode, which essentially means make light areas lighter and dark areas darker. I'm going to take the opacity and drop it to about 75%. Now, that gives us what looks like it's cast on the beach here, but I'm going to duplicate this layer. If I go up here to Layer, Duplicate, I want you to notice that the duplicate is in fact called Copy. Make a note to yourself. When you duplicate a smart object layer, it'll be called Copy, but it is in fact a duplicate. And there is a difference. Let's call this uh, Dupe. We're going to take the duplicate and put it in Multiply Mode, which means make light areas transparent, make dark areas darker, and let's just drop this to about 25%. Now, you'll notice that although the graphic looks okay, the text is a little bit hard to read. So what if I wanted to change the color of the text? Well, I could simply double-click on my smart object and this would actually open Adobe Illustrator, so I can edit the original. Here's my original artwork. I'm going to click on the text and change it to something like green. As a matter of fact, let's make it a little bit darker. Something like that. If we close this file and save the changes, jump back to Photoshop, there you have it. Now, we're going to take this, and you'll notice that down here by the shell, the artwork goes right over the top of the shell. Well, I want to hide part of that. So what we're going to do is take both of these layers, holding down the Shift key, and we're going to put them in a group. Let's just call this group Artwork. Now, layer masks reveal or conceal part of a group or part of a layer. I have a channel over here that I created that is simply the outline of the shell, 
black area will be concealed, white area will be revealed. So we're going to press down Control on Windows, Command on Mac, and click on Shell. We'll go up to our layer panel, and on this layer, or folder of layers, we're going to add a layer mask. Right down here at the bottom, you'll see Add Layer Mask. We'll click on that, and you'll notice that it actually just kind of knocked a hole right through that artwork. Now, as I look at this image, the artwork looks a little bit too warped for my taste. So if I come down here to Displace, I can just double-click and change the amount. Let's change it to uh, 14 and 14. If I click OK, it's going to ask me to reapply my map. Bang! Both of my layers changed at once. The reason I said that displacement maps, and in particular smart objects, are different than standard layers. When you make a duplicate of a smart object layers, they're both linked to the original artwork, but they're also linked to each other. If you were to make a copy by going to Layer, Smart Object, New Smart Object via Copy, they'd both be linked to the original, but they're not linked to each other. But there's one other hidden feature inside of Smart Objects. If you right mouse click on a Smart Object, you'll get a drop-down menu that says, I would like to replace the contents of this Smart Object. We're just going to navigate to a logo. doesn't have to be Adobe Illustrator. As a matter of fact, when I think of a beach, I think football, because I live in Kansas City, and we don't have professional football. We have the Chiefs instead, and that's where the Chiefs are going to be during the playoffs, on a beach instead of in the game. Now you'll notice that this layer has a white background. I could actually double click on the smart object. I'm just going to take the magic wand here and select the white. We'll take the opposite or inverse and I'm going to copy that content to a new layer. We'll go to layer, new, via copy. I'm going to throw away the background layer. Now I'm on a transparent background. And when I click Save, it'll update instantly. Well, that's it for displacement. I hope your team does better than mine. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.